Wildstar, a deep, sprawling space adventure set on the mysterious planet Nexus. This isn't just another sci-fi MMO with pretty colors. It's a completely new frontier. Know what else? The gameplay is fucking awesome. Oh, okay, this game looks pretty cool. What, what can you tell me about it? This disclaimer is hardcore. Okay, yeah, Any, anything else? Why? Because they're hardcore. Yes, I get it, it's hardcore, but like what like features do you have? For those who aren't hardcore. Okay, do you have, does the game have like raids or anything? Raids. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Raids. Okay. Yeah, I get it. Hardcore, 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 hardcore. You know what? Forget it. I don't care. Just close it down. Nobody gives a shit. Hey, everyone. Do you remember Wildstar, the game that was... Hardcore? Well, it turns out it was too hardcore for anyone because it's dead. And this isn't just YouTube clickbait. The game is actually dead, as in the surfers are closing down. Nobody plays it anymore. How did this happen? <gasps> 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 Before I answer that question though, let me tell you about an MMO that you can play. Black Desert Online. Today's video is sponsored by Kakao Games. Black Desert Online is one of the few MMOs in recent years that I actually spent quite a bit of time with. I have several videos on my channel covering the game and I really enjoyed it. This is described as an open world action MMO with cutting edge visuals and skill based combat. Some of its key features include a massive open world with impressive graphics. They actually even recently just did a graphical overhaul. It's got real time action combat. There's a detailed character creator if you would want to make kind of the character of your dreams. They've got 16 different diverse classes with the various skills and abilities. And then there are life skills and crafting and economy systems. Now the reason they're sponsoring this video is because they recently released the Dragon expansion, adding new areas, enemies, and things to do in the game. So if you guys are interested in checking out BDO, click on the link in the description below. And with that, let's get into the video. So what happened with Wildstar, a game that at once showed so much promise and had so much potential, but now simply doesn't exist. I remember when Wildstar first came out and it was a game that I really got into. I mean, they had a lot of a lot of cool things going for them. One of the biggest things was their unique combat system with the telegraphed attacks. You know, a lot of MMOs have telegraph systems, but Wildstar was kind of doing its own twist on that. There was also the path system that promised variation as you level up depending on the path that you selected. So I could be like a uh, an explorer or something, which would mean I'd have these different uh, jump puzzles essentially in areas that only I as an explorer were able to get to. The game also had a really cool and unique art style with a ton of personality. They had this player housing system, they had interesting looking PvP, and then lastly the game was promised to be Hardcore. hardcore. It's a word that they couldn't escape from to the point that it became quite a bit of a meme. And that is one of, I think, the many problems that Wildstar ended up having. I want to talk about the issues of Wildstar later in the video. First, let's talk about the history. I actually recently saw this really awesome video by a YouTuber by the name of Nerd Slayer, and he kind of covered a chronological history of what happened with Wildstar. I want to give you a brief recap of that here. So Carbon Studios was found back in 2005 and was actually filled with a handful of ex WoW devs and they actually officially revealed Wildstar in 2011. It was promised to be this MMO that lets you play the way that you want and that also harkened back to kind of the good old days of MMOs. The game then officially launched in 2014 and actually got a lot of early praise, ended up making over $26 million at launch and it had a decent sized player base, so much so that they ended up having server issues, which is something that happens with a lot of MMOs that people are excited about. Now, also also, what happens with a lot of MMOs is the subsequent drop-off, and it happened with Wildstar. After a few short months, the player base began to dip, but then in 2015, Wildstar decided they're going to go free-to-play, uh, ideally trying to revitalize their base, and it actually happened. We saw the player base and revenue jump after that free-to-play transition. A year later, in 2016, Wildstar revenue was reportedly continuing to dip. Carbon then had a ton of layoffs at their studio, and then in 2017, there were a few other updates and then finally here in 2018 we're at the point where the game is officially shutting down so i give you like a history of of the lifespan of the game but what are the things in between that led to us being at this point other than their super cringy sale pitch of hardcore. And I, I gotta admit, I totally understand what they were doing. They were trying to find their angle into the MMO market. They were trying to appeal to a certain type of player. Unfortunately, 
as it turns out, that, among other reasons, just wasn't enough. So first off, the game launched with the subscription model. Now that is not a death knell for a game, but it certainly limits its initial player base. You either want to do something like Guild Wars 2, where you just have a, a you, you buy the base game and you get to play it, and that's that's essentially it, or you launch as a free-to-play MMO with some sort of microtransaction system, which hopefully doesn't hinder the game's progression. Now it's worth noting they did have this cred system, as far as I remember, where you could purchase a token for a monthly sub, sort of like what the WoW token is that exists today. Either way, I think the sub model definitely hurt that initial thrust of people getting into Wildstar. And then we have the performance issues. Now, there was still a decent chunk of people playing the game, lots of people on launch day jumping in, and like happens with a lot of games that have a ton of players dumped into one server, there were server problems, queue times, there were performance issues, there were all sorts of things that hurt people's initial impressions of the game. It's a real hard thing to kind of circumnavigate when you've got a ton of people all rushing into your game at once that are likely going to leave after just a couple of weeks. How do you maintain the server integrity? It, it, you know what? It doesn't even really matter why it happens or how it happens. It just matters that performance issues at launch will negatively impact the impression that people have of your game. Then we've got the the hardcore marketing that we talked about. It was a bit over the top, and I think it really hurt this idea that they would get a, an audience that wasn't interested in hardcore rating. Like, we gotta be honest here, a, a big chunk of player bases when it comes to these uh, PvE-centric MMOs is kind of the casual, relaxed player base that, that maybe doesn't want to form a 40-man raid group or do the insane attunement. That's another problem. Wildstar had this ridiculous attunement system if you even wanted to raid. So the hardcore advertising and then just some of the, the actual game systems in the game kind of, I think, pushed away what could have been the casual player base. And again, Again, a casual player base can make up a, a large portion of your actual player base. Probably not a good idea if you're trying to make money and keep the studio going. I think the final problem that Wildstar had was just the fact that it's an MMO, a genre of games that seems to be a dying breed. MMOs are games that require massive time investments. We've already got the saturated market with the behemoth MMOs that people are pretty much glued to and unlikely to leave anytime soon. You look at some of the big developments studios out there in gaming, and they've pretty much given up on making traditional MMOs as we know them. Those have been replaced by titles like The Division and Destiny. What I would call MMO lights or quasi-MMOs, these multiplayer experiences in these open-ish worlds, that is like the MMO of today. But MMOs like WoW and EverQuest and Asheron's Call and everything post-WoW, they're just not getting made anymore. It doesn't seem like a, a, a large portion of the gaming audience is interested in those types of games. So Wildstar, being in a post-WoW MMO, had that mark against it from the start. Now that, in addition to all the other problems that I mentioned, and probably some things that I, I haven't even thought of here, all of that definitely led to the demise of Wildstar. Now you might be asking yourself, Force, games die all the time. We get new games that come out, and then after a few months or after a couple of years, the player base just doesn't exist anymore. Who cares about this particular game? With Wildstar, it, it makes me especially sad for two reasons. The first one is that, yeah, this was a game that looked like it had a lot of potential. Wildstar could have been a lasting MMO. We've got ones out there that have stuck around post-WoW and are still doing fairly well for themselves. But the second reason it makes me sad is this is just kind of solidifying this, this notion, this idea that MMOs as we knew them are pretty much a thing of the past. And it makes me so sad to say it because I love MMOs as we knew them. I loved EverQuest and Ashron's Call. I loved World of Warcraft and I've really enjoyed a lot of the MMOs that I've played since then. But that type of experience, it just doesn't resonate with the, the big gaming audiences out there. People are much more interested in playing a game like Destiny or playing Battle Royales or playing MOBAs or playing card games. There's a lot of games out there that are kind of booming as genres, but the traditional MMORPG is pretty much stagnant with the existing ones. And then we've got some stuff sprouting up in the future, but those are all just basically crowdfunded. And you know, let's be honest, they're probably going to have relatively small player bases. I don't expect any of them to take over the world. Who knows, though? I don't think a lot of people saw Fortnite coming either, and, and look at what happened there. I really love MMOs, and I did enjoy Wildstar for the time that I played it, and so that's the reason I'm sad. I'll admit, like, Wildstar did fumble in many ways. I just can't get over that advertising. It was so bad, but nevertheless, it had a lot of polish. It was interesting looking. The combat was fun. It doesn't matter. 
that wasn't enough. Congratulations, Wildstar. You hardcored your way out of an audience. Cry in shame. So, yep, yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't really have anything else to say. I just, uh, I'm sad. I'm sad that Wildstar doesn't exist anymore. I'm, I'm sad that uh, MMOs, as we know it, seem to be just going away. There's a lot of cool looking games coming out in the future that kind of fill that multiplayer loot thing that I enjoy. Like, I'm super excited for Anthem and The Division 2. Some of you are gonna call me crazy. I just like these kinds of games. It's just one of the genres that I can't seem to let go. Today is like a monumental, uh, moment with with one of these games that I did genuinely enjoy uh, just being gone forever. I can never go back and play Wildstar. Not that I was really planning on it anytime soon, but I mean, I, I, look, I'll be honest, it was too hardcore for me. All right, everyone, that's gonna do it for me here today. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed the recap and discussion about the death of Wildstar, and I'll see you guys later. Take it easy. Bye-bye.